Hello everyone. I hope everybody is going to have a very nice day. And today, if you can look behind me here, oh, I don't know, can you see? I think you might be able to figure out what I'm going to be doing. I decided that since I had a whole bunch of onions that I was going to can some French onion soup. Anyways, I hope that you will want to join me for a little portion of my day and I will talk to all of you in just a little while. I've got all my stuff together and this is a really simple recipe. Anybody can do this. But I wanted to say that Ever since I talked about the Yeti, the cup of my husband's for coffee, I've had a few people ask about how it works with cold. So what I did is I got out his mug, I filled it up with water, I put in a, a few ice cubes, maybe about eight, but my ice cubes with my refrigerator there that makes them is pretty small. And yeah, I did this about an hour ago. And there's still just as many ice cubes. We'll see, we'll just keep watching because this kitchen is gonna get really warm with that canner going. So I thought this was actually gonna be a really good time to test out this one. Anyways, I'll talk to you in just a minute as I'm going to cut up my onions and get that going. Bring you back in a minute. That was a lot of onions. <laughs> yeah. My eyes were tearing up and oh my goodness, but I got that all done. So now what we're going to do is we're going to put some olive oil into a big Dutch oven and we are going to get this stuff cooking up. So I'll bring this camera over by the stove and you can see what I'm doing. I thought I'd tell you what's actually in this recipe. It's a quarter of a cup of olive oil, four pounds of onions that have been thinly sliced, a tablespoon of salt, a teaspoon of ground black pepper, a teaspoon of dried thyme, and three cups of dry white wine, and three quarts of beef broth or beef bone broth. And I am using just store purchased organic beef broth because I rarely make beef bone broth. My bone broth is usually chicken. So anyways, that or a combination of the two because beef bones to make bone broth is a lot more expensive. But anyways, that is our recipe. I am going to be doubling it because this makes eight one pint jars and I'm going to go ahead and make 16 one pint jars. So yeah, we're going to start this and yeah, this is going to be good. And oh, look, look, still has ice. And you might think, well, it hasn't been that long. Well, actually it has because I had to peel all those onions and, you know, wipe my eyes and blow my nose in between, let the dogs out, let the dogs back in, cut some more, peel some more, let the dogs back out, wipe my eyes some more. Yeah, if you get the idea. It's been a whole nother hour. <laughs> so yeah, and it just has the same amount of ice cubes are still in there. It's not like they're gone. So yeah, in fact, I think I'm gonna have some because I'm kind of thirsty after all that. Bring you right back. Our directions say to heat our olive oil over a medium low flame until it's hot. Now please keep in mind, I, I'm doubling my recipe. And then what we're going to do is we are gonna stir in our onion and our salt and our pepper. And we're gonna cover and we're gonna cook and it's gonna be a whole nother hour. So let's get this hot so we can get those onions in there. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna stick our onions in here. And it's a lot of onions. And so I can see why it's going to take a little bit of time. We're just going to let this cook until it's all nice and tender. And I will bring you back when that is ready. Okay, so the next step that we were to do after we had cooked them for about an hour until they were nice and tender is we would take the lid off and we were to 
cook them down, stirring quite often so that they don't burn, and get them to be a caramel color. So that's a wrap. It said scraping the bottom every once in a while so that you can get all those wonderful little brown bits. And so I went ahead and I've done that. And now we are going to stir in our thyme and our wine. Now keep in mind, it was three cups of, for one batch and I'm making a double batch. And for this, it says that we're to simmer this until the wine has reduced to almost dry. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And you can see all those wonderful little, little brown bits in there, I hope. And get this reduced. And then from that point on, I am just going to be stirring in my broth and bringing it to a boil and simmering for about 15 minutes. Then it's gonna be ready to put in our jars. So I'll bring you back. Well, I think we know the drill here. We're going to put the soup into our hot jars, leaving one inch of head space. And I will wipe off the rim of the jar and put my lid on and then put it in the canner and proceed to keep doing that until they're all in the canner. So I won't bore you with this step and I'll show you what it's like when they come out of the canner. I almost forgot to update you on our Yeti. What's happened with this cold water? And let me tell you, it has been six hours and there is still ice cubes floating on top. There is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. There's about ten little ice cubes still floating on top. So yeah, I'd say that this is absolutely a win. Our scripture verse for today's devotion is Isaiah chapter 6, verse 3. And one called out to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. A.W. Tozer, in his classic book, The Attributes of God, tells us what comes into our minds when we think about God is the most important thing about us. Tozer goes on to say, man's spiritual history will be positively demonstrate that no religion has ever been greater than its idea of God. Worship is pure or base as the worshiper entertains high or low thoughts of God. Those are deep thoughts. And in our hearts, we know that what I just read is true. Because it's not enough just to follow God. Unfortunately, that has come to mean so many different things in our world today. And it actually means very little. If we make up in our own minds concerning what we think he is like, then we are just creating an idol in our own heads. The Bible says to praise God for who he is, especially when we are praying. Yet most people concentrate their praise in just a few areas, such as love. And then they spend most of the rest of the time in their prayers asking him for things. And of course, there's nothing wrong with asking God for things. Jesus told us that we have not because we ask not. However, we will not fully understand our God until we know his great character, his attributes. 
So I want to read a summary of the attributes of God that was written by Dr. William Bright. And I pray that this will help you to know just how great and how holy our God is. Because God is a personal spirit, I will seek intimate fellowship with him. Because God is all powerful, he can help me with anything. Because God is ever present, he is always with me. Because God knows everything, I will go to him with all of my questions and concerns. Because God is sovereign, I will joyfully submit to his will. Because God is holy, I will devote myself to him in purity, worship, and service. Because God is absolute truth, I believe what he says and live accordingly. Because God is righteous, I will live by his standards. Because God is just, he will treat me fairly. Because God is love, he is unconditionally committed to my well-being. Because God is merciful, he forgives me of my sins when I sincerely confess them. Because God is faithful, I will trust him to always keep his promises. Because God never changes, my future is secure and eternal. And with that, I want to remind you, life happens. Let's enjoy it. And insert yourself in each one of those. Because that is God's attributes for you. God bless. And I will talk to you on Monday.